Welcome back to Ophthalmology for undergraduates and postgraduate beginners. Pupil is an important part of the eye. It is not a structure, it is a hole in the iris diaphragm. But for the pupil, our vision will not be clear. Pupil regulates the amount of light that is entering into the eyes and it gives the clear vision. If we are in the dark, the pupil gets dilated. It allows more light to enter into the eyes to give a clear vision. If we are in a bright atmosphere, the pupil constricts, reduces the amount of excessive light entering into the eye and makes the vision clear. Coming to the examination of the pupil, examination of the pupil has to be done under five headings. One is the number of pupils. Second is position of the pupil. Third is size of the pupil. Fourth is shape of the pupil. Fifth is reaction to light and near. First thing we have to see in the pupil is how many numbers of opening are there in the iris or how many number of pupils are there. Usually there will be only one pupil. If there are multiple opening in the iris it is called as polychoria. Polychoria can be of two types. One is a true polychoria, another thing is pseudo polychoria. True polychoria is a condition which is a congenital abnormality in the iris. There will be two or more than two pupils. The each pupil will have a sphincter pupil A and each one of the pupil can constrict when light is thrown on the eyes. Pseudo polychoria is a condition where there will be one pupil, that pupil will be having a sphincter pupil A. All other openings in the iris, they do not have any sphincter pupil A and those openings will not constrict. The pseudo polychoria is usually seen in juvenile glaucomas, posterior polymorphous dystrophy. Next in the examination of the pupil is the position of the pupil. Normally, the position of the pupil will be corresponding to the center of the cornea. Sometimes, the pupil may be shifted to any direction. That is called as correctopia. Correctopia means the pupil is displaced from the center. What are all the causes for abnormally displaced pupil from the center? One is axenfeld riger syndrome. Other causes are midbrain correctopia. A midbrain having an infarction or a demyelinating disease can lead to correctopia. Most important thing in the examination of the pupil is determining its size. How to determine the size of the pupil? The examiner has to stand in front of the patient observing the eye to be examined. He keeps a light ready to be switched on in front of that particular eye and he keenly watches that eye and he slowly switches on the light. What will happen initially the pupil will have certain size and within few microseconds it becomes smaller in size. He has to catch a photograph in his mind what was the size of the pupil before constriction and that size of the pupil has to be compared with the size of the cornea and suppose if it is one fourth of the size of the cornea then it will be approximately 3 millimeters in diameter. This is how the size of the pupil is determined before the constriction of the pupil. The examination should be done not in a very bright room, not in a very dark room also. That also will alter the size of the pupil you are recording. Next coming to the what is the normal range of the size of the pupil? Normal range for the size of the pupil is 2.5 millimeters to 4 millimeters in diameter. 
if the pupillary size is more than 4 mm and it does not react to the light then it is called as midriasis if the pupillary size is less than 2.5 mm and it does not dilate more than that then it is called as meiosis let us see what are the common causes for meiosis and midriasis as far as meiosis is concerned both the pupils will be very small when the person is in deep sleep the patient's pupil will be in meiosis if the patient is having a horner syndrome horner syndrome is a autonomic dysfunction where the patient will be having ptosis that is drooping of the eyelids meiosis constricted pupil anhydrosis loss of sweating on the side of the face enough to almost the eye is okay shifted backwards into the socket so that is called as enough to almost the next common causes for uh, meiosis is pontine hemorrhage pontine hemorrhage is a cerebrovascular accident in the brain stem if there is a hemorrhage into the pons and the patient will be unconscious if you examine the eyes the pupil will be very small and constricted next common cause for meiosis in the eye pathology is uveitis or iridocyclitis in iridocyclitis the pupil will be small constricted and irregular causes for midriasis are the most common cause for midriasis that is a dilated pupil which is not reacting is pharmacological why i am saying this is most of the time patient might be had taking some eye drops which is which may be a midriatic or a cycloplegic sometimes the patient might be taking some drugs like atropine for abdominal problem or for some poisoning so that may also lead to midriasis one of the next commonest cause for bilateral dilated pupil is death death of a patient death of a person so dilated pupil is one of the evidences for a patient is death next is the third cranial nerve paralysis oculomotor nerve paralysis the sphincter pupil nerve will not constrict so the dilated pupil keeps the pupil dilated optic nerve atrophy or optic nerve malfunction due to optic neuritis central retinal artery occlusion where the entire retina is affected or retinal diseases which is very extensive so that most of the nerve fibers are affected can also lead to midriasis next important thing in the examination of the pupil is examining its shape the shape of the pupil as you all know it is circular or round in shape let us see some examples for abnormal shaped pupils in anterior uveitis or iridocyclitis the pupil will be small irregular this is called as festooning of the pupil that is irregular dilatation of the pupil this occurs in case of initial ring synechia ring synechia is attachment of the pupillary margin to the anterior capsule some portions may be tightly attached some portion may be loosely attached the loosely attached portions they dilate when you apply cycloplegic or midriatics the tightly attached portions they remain attached so that leads to a irregularly dilated pupil that is called as festooning of pupil d shaped pupil we have already seen it is due to iridodialysis separation of the iris from the ciliary body on one aspect leads to a d shaped pupillary formation the other example for irregular shaped pupil is sector iridectomy already we have discussed under iris where one portion of the iris is removed to allow for the lens to be delivered in cataract surgeries another important cause for irregular shaped pupil is sphincterotomy sphincterotomy means cutting the sphincter during a cataract surgery whenever there is a difficulty in delivering the lens cataractous lens through the pupil due to its small size the pupil the margin that is sphincter pupil a should be cut at several portions or multiple points and that will lead to some dilatation and the nucleus or cataractous lens can be delivered easily and the surgery can be 
done without much of a complication. Another important cause for abnormally shaped pupil is coloboma of the iris. Coloboma of the iris is a congenital problem where there will be a keyhole like defect in the iris. It is a keyhole shaped pupil. Here, because it is a congenital problem, all around the keyhole, the sphincter pupillae muscle will be present. And when you throw light on the coloboma, all the keyhole will constrict. Unlike the keyhole iridectomy, where you remove a portion of the iris on the infronasal aspect to give vision in a central corneal opacity. Here, when you throw light, only the semicircular portion will constrict due to sphincter pupillae present there. This portion, there is no sphincter pupillae, so it will not be present. The reaction will not be present. Pupil has to constrict and dilate, ascend when needed to give a clear vision. Now we are going to talk about the light reflex. When a bright light is thrown on the eye, what will happen? The pupil will constrict. How does it constrict? The light falling on the eye, it stimulates the rods and cones in the retina. From there, the signal is traveling along the nerve fibers, optic nerve and it goes to the optic chiasma, it goes to the optic tract. From the optic tract, the fibers of the pupillary reflex, they leave and go to the midbrain. In the midbrain, what happens is, both side fibers, they crisscross each other and from the midbrain, starts the third cranial nerve that cranial nerve comes back to the eye and it causes constriction of the pupil by constricting the sphincter pupillae muscle so when you put light on one eye because of the crisscrossing at the midbrain of the fibers from both sides what will happen it will cause constriction of pupil on both the eyes Putting light on one eye will cause constriction of pupil on the same side as well as on the opposite side. So, constriction of the pupil on the same side is called as direct light reflex. Constriction of the pupil on the opposite side is called as consensual light reflex. Next important thing in the examination of pupil is the near reflex. What is near reflex? Whenever you want to see something near, what will happen? The eyeballs will move towards the nose and the pupil will constrict. So that is called as near reflex. So the eyeball when it moves inwards like this, they, when they are going for convergence, a yeah, position sense is emanating from the medial rectus muscle. It goes to the brain and it comes back through the third cranial nerve and causes constriction of the pupil that is called as near reflex. Let us now discuss some abnormal reflexes in the pupil. The first and foremost thing is the Marcus Gunn pupil. It is called as afferent pupillary defect. I have drawn two eyes here. In one eye there is an optic nerve lesion. Another eye is normal. If there is an optic nerve lesion in one eye, what happens when you throw light on this eye? Because the optic nerve is not functioning properly or it is not functioning, the pupil will not constrict on this side and the pupil on the other eye also will not constrict. We already told that there are crossing of fibers in the midbrain. So both the sides, the third nerve will not constrict the pupil. If you put light on the normal eye, what will happen? It will cause constriction of the pupil on that eye and because of the crossing of fibers in the midbrain, the pupil will constrict on the affected eye also. How will you find this out? By doing a simple test called as swinging flashlight test. So we have to first throw the light on the affected eye and 
what will happen when you throw a light on the affected eye the pupil remains dilated so the pupil on the other side when we swing the light towards the normal eye what will happen the pupil constricts here and the pupil also constricts in the affected eye when we move back towards the affected eye already constricted pupil in this affected eye will start dilating will start dilating so this is called as marcus gun pupil and it can be due to an optic nerve problem in the affected eye let us see other abnormalities in the pupillary reflex the first one is the adis tonic pupil what is this adis tonic pupil the pupil is dilated when you throw light on the eye the pupil takes a very long time to constrict so that is called as adis tonic pupil usually seen in ciliary ganglion lesions next problem is argyle robertson pupil and pseudo argyle robertson pupil this is usually present in syphilitic infections the difference between argyle robertson and pseudo argyle robertson pupil is in argyle robertson pupil the pupil will be small will be myotic in pseudo argyle robertson pupil the pupil will be midriatic what happens to the pupillary reflex in these two conditions when you throw light on the eye the pupil will not constrict light reflex is absent when a person tries to read something or do something on the near now the near reflex will be present so light reflex will be absent near reflex will be present it is called as light near dissociation the next common thing is vernicke's hemianopic pupil usually this occurs in lesion in the visual pathway beyond the optic chiasma what happens is if there is a problem beyond the optic chiasma in one eye one half of the retina will not be functioning other half of the retina will be functioning if suppose my nasal retina is not functioning when i put light into the nasal retina from the temporal side what will happen the optic nerve will not be stimulated because of that the pupil will not constrict suppose i put the light from the nasal side stimulating the temporal retina now the optic nerve is stimulated and the pupil constricts that is called as vernicke's hemianopic pupil pupil is a very huge subject to be discussed in a short time i have tried to tell something about this pupil which we are seeing in commonly so let us stop here let us see in the examination of the lens in the next video thank you